And I would like to say also that um, our, one of our main goals from the webinar tonight is just to, to, again, introduce you to the lab, take a look at the equipment as it's running, but also to help you understand the testing equipment, the differences between the equipment and help you as producers or an association uh, to pick whichever test works best for your operations needs. So keep that in mind as you look at the equipment, uh, be thinking about you know, how this might work for your, your needs, uh, where you are in your operation and your genetics and enhancing your, your cashmere quality and your herd quality. Um, just a brief background on myself and then we'll uh, do Dr. Polk, We'll let Farron speak as well, and then we'll get into the demos. We're trying to social distance a little bit here, university rules. We really need to be wearing masks. So we're just, we're trying to stay far apart so you can still hear us. Uh, so uh, be patient with us as we move the equipment around so you can get the best video of what's happening with each individual machine. Uh, the machines are spread out through the lab. So you know, typically Zoom conferences, we're sitting in one space. So uh, we're gonna have to be a little mobile and we're, we're hoping that our Wi-Fi hangs in there and keeps us all connected. If not, we will we will jump back on. So be patient with us there. Um, but uh, just briefly, my background, I have a, a, a background in the medical sciences. I'm a retired OBGYN. Uh, I'm a sheep and goat producer. We raise Rambolet sheep and uh, Angora goats. Uh, however, I started with Pygora goats, which I know they're not uh, cashmere breed goats, uh, but uh, uh, we had a lot of type C goats and I'm familiar with dehairing. We also own and operate a, a fiber mill, which has a dehairing uh, machine with it as well. So I've got a fiber background and a medical sciences lab background, and I'm really excited to be, to, to be joining the lab uh, as we expand. So um, with that, I'm going to let uh, Dr. Pope speak. I'm gonna roll out of the way and let him get closer to the monitor so you can hear him. And uh, then we'll do Farron and then we'll get into the remainder of the program with the demos. Good evening, uh, my name is Ronald Pope. I am a, a research scientist here at the Bill Sample Mohair Lab. Uh, been in the uh, sheep uh, industry my entire life, uh, grew up uh, with them, and angora goats also in uh, earlier years. But uh, anyway, I, I, um, I own a part-time appointment here uh, with Texas AgriLife. Uh, I also operate a uh, wool and mohair marketing cooperative where that we uh, market uh, wool and mohair uh, from grower members uh, that are associated with the co-op. And so uh, I'll turn it over to Farron now. My name is Farron Pfeiffer and I am a senior research associate here at the AgriLife Research, Woolly Mohair Research Laboratory. And I've been here about 42 years, uh, still learning about this uh, wool and mohair business. <laughs> I don't think you've ever learned too much, but <clears throat> anyway, what we're going to do this evening is kind of demonstrate what we do and how we do it and so forth as far as, uh, well, tonight we're going to do cashmere since that's your primary interest. So anyway, uh, if that's about all I have, uh, we, like I say, we measure fibers on different instruments. Main two we run is OFDA 2000, OFDA 100. And that's what we're going to be demonstrating tonight because I'm quite sure that's probably what your primary interests are. Uh, I guess I'll turn it back over to Don and she can go from what we're going to do. Uh, so we are going to start with just a little brief comment uh, on our outline. We had sample submission and preparation. Uh, uh, we're going to take you into the lab room and show you the preparation for cashmere samples uh, to be run on the OFDA 100 and 2000. Um, Y'all want to do that next? So we're going to head over to a different section of the lab to watch that prep and so bear with us because we're going to be kind of rolling. It should be pretty. Don't get dizzy. Yeah, don't get dizzy. We're going to follow Baron. Let's try not to Drop the 
it on this side. Where, where do you want me there? Yeah. Okay, what I've got here is a little lock of cashmere. It's probably cashmere top or whatever. And what I'm going to do is cut this into snippets. This is a guillotine. And you can cut as many snippets as you have a sample for. And I've cut it about four times. And the snippets. are in this pan and I'm not real sure if you can see these. I don't know if y'all are able to see these, but anyway, this is just raw cashmere that we've obtained. What we do next. <clears throat> what we do next is we transfer this sample over to a phone, a Buchner phone. And then we're gonna chemical wash it. And what we do is we wash it with trichloroethane. And trichloroethane is a, a dry cleaning solvent. Then we hit it with a little bit of hot alcohol. It also aids in the degreasing process. And we use a little bit of acetone and that helps in the drying process, even though we're gonna put it in the oven. From here we go to oven and it's set at 105 degrees and we'll let it dry for about 30 minutes and we'll take it out and then we'll set it on a cabinet here beside the OFDA and what we do is let it equilibrate to room temperature and relative humidity. And I don't know if you can see that. That sample is inside there and it has been washed and so forth. We'll go over to the OFDA 2000 now where I've already have a sample that's dried and so forth. Okay, I'm going to switch cameras. I've already, uh, down at the bottom, you'll see where it says Dawn Brown. I've got my cell phone in a separate room with the OFDA 100, so I can get really close to the microscope with my cell phone. I can't with the laptop, so just, again, bear with me as we change technology sources. I'm going to travel you again through the lab. Try not to drop the laptop. Okay, change that. We are doing the OFDA 2000, so we're going to stick with the laptop. Hang on one second. I'm going to try to get you the best view that we can. Okay. All right, here's our sample. I have a slide here. What we do is we put this slide under here. This is the spreader. Take our sample. We've got our sample in our spreader. We turn it on. What it's doing, it's spreading this sample out throughout the, uh, the middle of this slide. It's set for about 30 to 45 seconds, but you can turn it off or on before then. Didn't quite spread it like I wanted it to, so I'm gonna put it in there again. And it doesn't take long to spread it out on this slide.
Okay, it's ready to measure. What we do is very carefully take this slide out, very gently put the top of the slide on, slam it down, your slide is gone. Your sample is gone. <laughs> you don't want to sneeze while you're doing this up either. Now our slide is ready to run and I'll take it over here to the OFDA. Uh -oh. I don't know if y'all can see this, but I'll show you this slide. You can see the, the fibers on the slide. Looks like we're getting a little glare in there, but anyway, that's what I it looks like. Very okay. cool. Coming on this little apparatus right here. Okay, and now we're going to measure. Just go up here to measure. Get that. It's already programmed. I've got a sample number in there. When it's done, it calibrates on a wire there. It takes about five or 10 seconds, something like that. You can see these slides running up here. How it's going through the measurement. Okay, on that slide we measured 6,301 fibers. The uh, average fiber diameter is 16.03. The CV is 22.16. And the standard deviation is 3.55. Uh, it also has a capability of measuring comfort factor. Uh, <clears throat> it also has a min and max diameter along the fiber diameter, uh, the density, and uh, curvature is also available on this. So. That's how the sample is measured on the OFDA 2000, the bench top. We also have an OFDA 2000 uh, suitcase or portable model. Anyway, now we'll go into the OFDA 100. This is a, just a few of the portable model. It's the same, same technology, but it works off a different preparation of slide samples. And we might want to get into that later, but we're going to... Um, now we're going to switch to the OFDA 100. So I'm going to I'm going to leave you right here with this view, and we're going to go into this next slide. Farron, sorry to interrupt, but Don's cell phone is on mute, so we can't hear. Sorry, there sorry, sorry. Thank you. Okay, this is the OFDA 100. It's a microscope, very similar to that, except that one's a lot smaller. Uh, we obtained this instrument back in the late 80s, so it's not very new anymore. And <clears throat> it's hard to get parts for it. And, uh, you can't get it repaired because they don't work on them anymore. You just have to do it yourself, you know. And I'm not a very good do-it-yourselfer, but I am gonna explain. A little bit what this does and uh, what I've got is a slide of the same sample we had or actually it's the same sample we had. Decide. This is the same slide that we measured on the OFDA 2000. Putting it in here okay and then you just hit measure and now we're measuring. Showing the TV screen. There's the fibers up on the screen. It's showing you measuring the fibers. What? Yeah, get up closer. Can y'all see that? Yes. Okay. Uh, how about? 
try to get you a view of the microscope. Can y'all see that? Yes. This one takes probably about three times as long as the OFDA 2000. And if you're measuring medulation on it also, it takes about five or six times as long. <laughs> This machine was our bread and butter when we first opened the lab back in the 80s. We were doing things under a microscope for a long time and most of our eyes all went bad off, off of that. But anyway, we were able to obtain this and got a good deal on it from uh, <clears throat> Australia who, who manufactured these at the time. And uh, we've used it for years. And I mean, it was great until the OFDA 2000 came out which made life a little bit simpler, a, a whole lot faster. And if I was if I was sending my own personal samples in, I'd have them done on the OFDA 2000 because in my opinion, and, and I run this thing every day, I think it's probably more accurate than this. I'm not saying it's, uh, well, I shouldn't say more accurate, but it's as accurate, but it's twice as fast and gives you more information than, what our result in the OFDA. That one, when we ran it on OFDA 2000 inside, well, we got 16.1. Uh, this one's 16.56. So it's like 0.4 tenths of a micron off or whatever. But anyway, it, it's a great machine. Uh, we, don't, we don't use it anymore because we've got faster instruments to use. And, and that's what people want is how fast it is. One of my questions though I have is I had one lady and I want to I kind of want to get this clarified with the cashmere goat people. Uh, we have been cutting these fibers off at 30 microns. I had one particular lady, I won't mention her name, but she told me that no, you're supposed to cut them off at 20 microns. I said, well, I haven't heard that yet because <clears throat> back in the 86 or seven, something like that, we had a cashmere conference here and that's when Dr. Chris Lepton, who was my former boss, worked here and they, the Cashmere Goat Association. And he, he did, we did a lot of experiments, experimentation with this and determined that most of your cashmere is going to be under 30 microns, but it should be for sure under 17 microns is actual cashmere. But you're going to have some that are gonna be coarser, that are actual cashmere fibers. But anything that's probably over 30, fiber, 30 microns is gonna be guard hairs. And that's not what you're really wanting to measure is the guard hairs, you want the, the actual cashmere. But like this one, we have samples that go out to 30, 29 and 28, but it's still measuring cashmere samples, you know? So my, uh, and I'll get down to, tell me tomorrow or something if I don't get it, but are the cashmere people still cutting them off at 30 microns? That's my question to y'all. Can you hear us? Yeah, uh, yes. We're, um, coming, we're gonna come back out here. I'm gonna turn my phone off so it doesn't have interference with the uh, laptop, okay? Sure. Uh, did did you hear Farron's question? Yeah, um, about where you guys would like the cutoff to be because we have to change settings in our machines for that to happen. So I don't think um, I haven't heard anybody have issue with the thirty micron cutoff, but we could certainly. Um, discuss this with people and see if it's an issue. Because I think, you, you know, ideally your, your cashmere is going to be below 19 and then your guard hair would be uh, a lot greater than 30. So I would think a, a cutoff of 30 would be adequate to kind of capture what you have there. 
said, you sure me that it was supposed to be under 20 microns, the cutoff should have been. And I said, mm. well, I hadn't heard that from the Cashmere uh, Goat Association or the Cashmere people. So I, I still cut it off at 30. And that's what I report to the growers or whatever. Pam, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I, I think that's what's been in place for, for many years. Um, we certainly do expect our cashmere to be um, finer than 20 microns. But since we may send in samples that have one or something, um, it's probably a little safer to have a cutoff at, at 30 mm -hmm. uh, or perhaps something in between. Um, my experience has been with a, a 30 micron cutoff. One other question I have. Do you, have y'all sent any cashmere fiber samples to New Zealand to have them analyzed? And do they cut it off at 30? Hmm. We really need Wendy here. Um, because I, I believe she has. Yeah. I haven't, so I don't. I haven't. Who is this, Wendy Pay? Yeah. Wendy Pay, yes. Yeah, I've analyzed many samples for her and she wants them cut off at 30 microns. So. Oh. <clears throat> um, sister, have you sent any? I haven't, um, I haven't sent any in a while. I, I think I sent a batch about a year or so ago, but yes, I do agree with the principle of the 30 uh, micron cutoff, basically cutting off all your guard hair. That makes good sense. I agree. So good. I guess before we get into the question and answers from the, the you know, that may come in from the chat, uh, just a little bit, of, uh, I wanted to show, I know if you send samples to our lab, you, you've gone to the website, you'll see our, our form uh, for cashmere, uh, the steps. And I know there were some questions about whether or not to send in a, a, a combed sample versus a, a, a clipped or a, a shorn sample. And, you know, we can do either one, uh, and we do hope to to make some adjustments in this form as we we move forward with uh, again expanding the lab and revamping the website, as well as making some changes to the sample uh, uh, submission form, so that you can make some of the decisions about how you know what you're sending in, combed, clipped, and which process you would like uh, to have. You know which which sample are you. OFDA 100, OFD 2000, staple or snippets. Um, we'll go into some of that in, in the question and answer too, but just to give you a heads up that, you know, we are gonna make some changes and try to put some different selections on here for you, depending on what you uh, as an association would like to see on the form. And uh, again, just do know, we, we do want a side sample. If, if you're combing it, make sure you're combing it again from this area, you, you, want, you want those to be consistently uh, you know, no matter how you get them off the goat, you would like it to be in the same location so the, the results are comparable. So, uh, but that's about all I had to say. Uh, it, was there anything else you would like us to show you, would, would like to see uh, before we do questions and answers, anything else? Sure. So the, um, and this kind of ties into one of the questions we just got online, um, the UFDA, 2000, you showed it in snippet mode, but there's also another way to operate that, correct? Yeah. Um, I showed again, Ronald, uh, I'm, I'm Ronald Pope, and uh, maybe just a little bit on, on how these instruments uh, work. Uh, all of them, uh, the OFDA stands for Optical Fiber Diameter Analyzer. And so, what they're using is optics, uh, cameras uh, at certain pixels so that we can get a measurement of the fibers that it's reading. And so uh, the 2000 is just uh, a uh, optical uh, fiber diameter analyzer that's been improved from the 100. Um, and uh, then we get to the snippet versus the entire staple. And this is, uh, what is the intent of the sample? Uh, what is the grower really wanting? Uh, if you're gonna be using the measurements for marketing, 
uh, whether it's places or animals, uh, I would recommend that the snippet be the one that you use uh, primarily because we're taking it from generally the same area so that you can compare it from one animal to the next. Now, the staple uh, test, we take the entire staple. Uh, I'll stop right there. The suitcase is designed for, it was fine. Oh, okay. I was going to show the suitcase. Okay. There, you can talk in front of it. How about that? Let's sit there. Staple is placed on a slide like this, and the entire staple goes on it. Uh, it is designed to go out in the shearing shed or out in the farm. It's, it's portable. And so, as you can realize, we don't have a lab here at, at, at any of these locations to wash the sample like we would if we're going to do the snippet. Uh, the snippet, I think, is going to give you a more reliable result uh, overall. Uh, but with the staple, you do get some information that you can use in selection programs between animals, uh, and uh, it, it will certainly rank them. Uh, but we are getting the entire staple from the tip to the base, and so it's measuring a different sample. And so you're not gonna get the same results from it that you would from the snippet. So again, if you're using the uh, information to market individual fleeces or to market individual animals, uh, the 2000 snippet would be the way to go. Uh, if you're wanting just for a selection program within your own flock, uh, the uh, uh, staple, test is going to be a little more, a little less expensive. And uh, so that would be the reasoning behind that. Um, maybe just a little bit, we didn't cover it about what, what information do you get off each one of them. Uh, you get basically the same information. Uh, the primary ones being fiber diameter, a measure of variation, whether you express it as standard deviation, or coefficient of variation. Uh, you also get curvature, uh, but uh, those are the only actual measurements taken. Comfort factor and some of the spinning fineness and these others are calculations based off of the standard deviation and the average fiber diameter. Um, you may be wanting to use those, but uh, realize that it is just measuring fiber diameter and then calculating uh, standard deviation and, and uh, uh, coefficient of variation, and then also curvature. On the OFDA 100, you also get a measure of medulation. Uh, if we cut off the fibers at 30 micron, it's going to be somewhat immaterial, uh, the amount of medulation, because I can tell you 19 micron fiber is not gonna have a, med a medulation to it. Uh, so what the medulation that we're reading off of this OFDA 100 would be guard hairs. And so uh, that medulation measure is not reported on the OFDA 2000, the newer model, if you would. Uh, but to me, it's probably immaterial uh, unless you're producing something that's, uh, consistently over 25 micron. And so um, here again, the cutoff being at 30, uh, basically it reads all of them, but it just doesn't use any of those that it measured over 30 into the actual determination of fiber diameter. Uh, so um, I'll stop there. Uh, you do get on the staple, you do get staple length, whereas you don't get that on the snippet. All right. Question number two. <laughs> Next question. Um, is the optical test of a higher quality than the forced air test? And then she apologizes. Sorry, I don't remember the name of the test the, precisely. The airflow. Um, yes, this is uh, the airflow is a um, known amount of washed fiber, whether it's wool, mohair, cashmere, whatever, 
And it's just a resist air resistance as the air is forced through it at a known pressure. And it's calibrated, all of these instruments are calibrated back to the referee method, which is micro projection. Uh, airflow gives you fiber diameter only, nothing else. And it's, huh? no statistics, just the average fiber diameter, that's it. Uh, no one in the world uses the airflow anymore except for some carpet walls in New Zealand. So uh, I would say that uh, we'd be stepping back considerably uh, by going to the airflow. Thank you. Next question. Have you seen the FiberLux micron meter? If so, what are your opinions? The, the FiberLux, uh, again, it uses a different technique. It's similar to airflow, but it's light transmission. Uh, you put a sample into it, a standard uh, known amount of lumens of light shines through. It's picked up on the receptor on the opposite side. And uh, again, it only gives you fiber diameter. Uh, it's a portable model. Uh, you don't have to use uh, uh, washed wool like you would in the... Uh, uh, we do have one. We, we, we've run quite a bit of tests on that. Uh, for an individual grower, uh, the, the selling point on this or the benefit to it is it is not very expensive. These instruments that we've shown you here today are going to be at least $50,000 uh, to have one. The, the FiberLux is <coughs> under $2,000. Uh, again, I think it would do a good job of ranking your animals if you uh, want to look at uh, you know, I want to use this. I've got three billies to pick from. I want to use the, the two finest. I, I think that it would say, okay, here's your coarsest. I wouldn't have a whole lot of confidence that it's all that accurate as far as uh, if we ran them on another instrument here. It is, it does, uh, the R squared on it compared to the OFDA 2000 is about 0.82, I believe, on our tests that we've run. So it's fairly accurate. It's, it's a dependable uh, type of instrument and I think could be used uh, with individual grow, uh, by an individual grower uh, at a fairly economical cost. Thank you. Um, when you s uh, reconfigure your website, would you consider an for electronic submission of information to prevent uh, uh, transcriptions? I'll let Dawn go ahead and she, she's she's pretty passionate about this and and uh, yeah we're kind of back in the uh, 1990s uh, uh, we used to fax everything but we we do know how to send an email now uh yes that is certainly uh actually we have we're meeting next week to go over proposals for a lab information management system uh, again, with the university, we have rules and purchasing requirements and hurdles that we have to get through. So um, our goal is to have that operational by January the 1st. So again, these next uh, six months or so, eight months or so, we're going to see, you know, changes in the website and changes in, again, how you, how you uh, interact with uh, submitting samples. And our, our goal is to have a portal Again, you can log in, get your information, you can track uh, your results and your, your fiber as it's moving through the lab. Again, we hope that um, our processes uh, uh, are streamlined and, and faster. Uh, but again, the snippet, you saw all the different steps that took place to get a snippet prepared. Again, we skipped the part where it goes into the oven for an hour and then it has to equilibrate to your uh, conditions in the room before you can process it on the OFG 2000 bench shop here. So again, you know, it is a more labor intensive way to, to, uh, to, to get your samples through the lab than the suitcase, the staple uh, OFDA 2000. So again, yes, uh, updated website, updated lab information management system. So you can, again, pay us online, get your results online. Uh, our goal is to have it between all devices so that, you know, wherever you are, you've got your phone, you've got your portal, you can 
see what's going on. And again, some of these enhancements are directed toward the commercial wool industry uh, that needs all that, you know, the, the market fluctuations of wool change frequently. And so producers need to have, uh, and warehouses need to have that information quickly so that they can capitalize on the best payment for their, for their wool. So, but yes, many updates. <laughs> awesome news. I'm sure it'll be easier on your end too, to not have to yes. type yes. all our silly goat names in. <laughs> um, I like the goat names. I do like <laughs> the goat names. <laughs> Next question is, um, aside from fineness of fiber for say sales, what other information can the OFDA tell us for the health and management of our livestock? Well, um, I, I, it really, I mean, I guess you could, if you were looking at a staple, uh, you might see some uh, a long, pro, uh, long fiber profile changes in fiber diameter, but uh, again, uh, that's not going to be very precise. Uh, it could be when they were kidding, uh, nutrition, so, you know, going more for milk production and the fiber uh, thins out uh, or, or gets smaller, but that's, um, not, I mean, as long as the, the goats are in good condition and, and nursing, uh, that's just going to be something you see. Uh, the problem um, is uh, you're you're reading a history book. It, it's already happened if you're looking back on it, and uh, you know even if it's parasite control, um, you're not going to wait to send in a sample to see if you needed to to uh, use dewormer six months ago. Uh, you're going to be doing that on a daily basis. Um, uh, the, the thing that I think that uh, has the, the, the most merit would be in genetic selection. And, and here again, looking at those parameters that are meaningful. Uh, it, the OFDA 2000 gives you a lot of information, more than you really can utilize. Um, fiber diameter, variability, uh, you can measure staple length on the animal, uh, and uh, those those two are probably going to be uh, the the largest uh, impact on income uh, or management. Um, you know, one thing that we overlook a lot is how many pounds. Uh, you know, that one is uh, you know we see it in the sheep industry where that oh yeah we've got a 18 micron clip, but they're only shearing six pounds. Uh, whereas a 20 micron uh, shearing 20 pounds is going to bring you a lot more money uh, as a whole. Uh, and so, anyway, I, I think sometimes uh, more information is not necessarily beneficial. Uh, you get, uh, or I do, I get off in the weeds sometimes. And so, um, you know, management. Uh, you're, you, as an individual grower, you're going to determine what your primary objective with your flock is. And so uh, once you've got that established, uh, you uh, set some objectives. And the key to that is once you set them, don't be changing them. You know, you've got to stay with it. You've got to give it time, especially when it comes to uh, genetic selection. And so, um, is there a specific uh, point on management or health that uh, someone wants to bring up? Or does that somewhat answer? Okay. Unless they type something in, I'll assume that answers their question. Yeah. But um, They're tired of hearing yes, me. Okay. She says that answers it. Thank you. I will tack on to that. When you orient the staple to read along the length, um, do you always orient it in the same direction? Absolutely. So, for example, can we? Yeah. It, it, here in the lab, uh, at, at this lab, uh, they put the base at the top and read to the tip. I also have one uh, at my warehouse. And when I go out and test animals out in the field, 
uh, just because it's easier, I always do it tip to the base, but I always do them all the same. And um, so. See, this is the slide. And so mm -hmm. uh, that does make it on a comb sample. If the sample's all jumbled together, it does take us a little bit of time to try to, you know, maneuver it back in here to make sure we get the, the, the cut end or the, the skin end, you know, here down to the tip of the fiber that that's generally how we load these into the machine but uh, if it's a cut sample then you know we can see that very clearly with the cashmere samples but the combed ones um uh if it's all jumbled together we have to kind of pick them apart a little bit it, it, it can still be done it just uh, uh and, and there's no harm in sending samples in like that uh they can be done uh, but we just have to fiddle with it just a little bit more to get it, you know, get it how we need it in the machine. So will the left side of the graph correlate with the most recent fiber then? Uh, if, you're, if you're looking at a long fiber profile, the left would start. Yes. Yeah. I think I had to, had to pick up the rock. Remember which left was, but here the point is, um, um, we have no problem with comb samples. I'll, I'll just put that. If we go back and look at how uh, we've tested, uh, especially with this new equipment, where we can measure the entire staple, uh, we always just took a side sample. We'd get electric clippers and, and take it, and it's primarily off sheep and angora goats. And even in the early days here in Texas with Joe David Ross, we would take a side sample off cashmere and uh, it would be clipped. Um, recently, we, new to me, uh, was the idea of just combing it. And I understand that, there's no problem with it. Um, and, uh, you know, when you're combing it, if you can kind of make certain that you maintained a little bit of staple continuity to where that it isn't just a, a, a you know spider web. Uh, the other thing that I think we've got to be cautious of, I'm not saying there's a problem, is when are you combing it? Uh, because the way I understand it is you may comb three or four times during the spring. And so is it first combing? Is it fourth combing? Uh, I'm sure that there's going to be some differences in the product or the sample, uh, depending on when it was combed. So, but that's for you to decide. It's not for, we're not here to tell you you've got to do it this way or that way. But if you get the information back, uh, you need to be aware of, of those little, uh, you know, issues that, that may cause a little bit of confusion. That makes sense? Yes. So, uh, and we just received before we go to the next question. Could we shear a spatch just testing and then do the combing? What was that again? Um, we just blew up a question asking could we shear a small patch for testing and then mm -hmm. comb the rest? They'd be two separate samples. I, 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 I mean, there again, if they want to take a clip sample and send it in, and then if they want to comb it, uh, you know, I guess, uh, you know, that's entirely up to the individual. We'll run them both, but they're not comparable. If you're saying, can you, can you shear the sample for testing and then comb the rest of the coat off of the goat? That's what we do here. We shear a sample and oh, send yeah, the, the short samples in for testing, and then I don't want to deal with the guard hair, so I I just I just comb. So if that's the I question, got you, I got you. that's what I do. Yeah, that that's very. I mean, uh, your your procedure on how you want to do it is is entirely up to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank I'm you. not going to come in out and help you comb it. <laughs> You're not? That's not a service we can <laughs> request. You can um, request it. <laughs> uh, our next question is, uh, for cashmere goat registration, we need to submit results for fiber diameter, curvature, length, and CV. Which test machine tests for all, uh, which test or machine tests for these measurements? Okay. Uh, 
I think that's something that the CGA needs to, to look into. The OFDA 2000 on the staple portion uh, where it's put on the slide like we showed you is the only one that'll give you length. So maybe you measure it on the animal and so, because the reason I'm saying that is uh, you've got those other parameters in there and I, I would think that the snippet is going to give you a better uh, consistent result than a uh, staple. And it has to do with the fact that we, we really wash the sample going into the snippet form, whereas we do a little chemical wash and then calculate a grease correction factor. Uh, and so, uh there is an element of error uh, when we have to do a grease correction factor on and and if somebody sends in 40 samples we're only going to run about 10 of them to get a grease correction factor whereas when we get the snippet all the grease is removed and so um you know that's again one of the uh, association's uh, decisions uh, you, you have these requirements, uh, but um, I would still recommend the 2000 snippet uh, for to meet those criteria uh, for the Casimir Association as far as registration. Use a ruler on the animal to get the length. And I'd like to add something to that. Just that grease correction factor. He mentioned, you know, let's say a producer sends in 40 samples. We're going to take 10 of those and we have a little machine over here where we wash them in a, in a solution. We soak it for five minutes, take it out, pat it dry. It, it evap it's meant to evaporate some dirt and grease. So then it goes on the suitcase over here and it's measured. So we take those 10 samples and we run them just dirt, you know, greasy. Okay. Then we wash them. And then we remeasure them clean. So we compare the, the 10 greasy measurements to the 10 clean measurements. And the machine calculates a grease correction factor. And this is unique for you, your farm, it's your, your herd, your animals. So then we take the remaining 30 samples you have and we run those all greasy. And then we take we have that grease correction factor to adjust the micron essentially uh, as if they were all clean. So you can see where there would be some, some variation in there because some animals you know are not as greasy as others and some, some are, are like to roll in the dirt and collect everything in their fleece they can find. So that's, that's the difference with this machine whereas the snippet, every sample is thoroughly cleaned and um, not the nicest chemicals in the world, certainly. We would love to make that process <laughs> a little better. Uh, we'll have to see if the, you know, those guidelines are set forth by the ASTM and the IWTO, you know, the people that make all the textile testing standards. So that those are the chemicals we have to use for that. Uh, but nonetheless, you can see why, why you might, again, you're going to get a, a more standard, clean, every sample result off of this machine versus the faster method here using a factor uh, based off of a percentage of your herd. So does that help? Yes. Okay. Next question we have is um, how much fiber do you need if it's combed? You, you saw the snippets that, that uh, I, I hope you could see the snippets that, that Farron took. Uh, it doesn't take a, you know, a, a, a lot. Uh, usually with wool, I say the uh, something the size of your thumb. That's a snippet size. Yeah, and so, so. we're just doing a cross section across it. Uh, if we need, and generally on the on the snippets, if it's a, a good staple formation, we take it about a quarter of an inch from the base, and so. Um, and even with combed, if we can determine which end of the, is the base, 
uh, we'll take it at, at that location. And so if we need to take it a little more or additional sample, we'll just move up and take a, another guillotine. Usually a, a couple of guillotines uh, on a, you know, uh, one and a half, two inch, you know, circumference uh, a staple would be more than enough. Doesn't take much, I'll put it that way. I'll, I'll let me put it this way. Um, if you send too much, we'll try to let you know that you don't need to take as many much. If you're sending too little, we'll let you know. That's helpful. Um, I'm sure you know that most of the cashmere goats only give a few ounces. So it's, it's always uh, yeah. scary to have to send a big chunk. No, you yeah. don't need to. The thumb size, I think, would be uh, maybe just start there and we'll see how it works. I'm, I'm also thinking that um, uh, I have snack bags full of fiber, but if I only sent you the thumb, I may be able to go back and get that pat, that group that is straight that will be better for your process than the the wad that you're talking about. So that's that it's helpful for me to know how much I need to send. So thank you. Good. Make sure it's the the you know the side area that mm -hmm. you're collecting from. We're almost at the hour. Are there any final questions? Well, I want to thank you for, for uh, allowing us to share with you. Um, I know that uh, going forward, uh, we would probably plan to have some type of uh, ability to communicate either through a webinar. Uh, we do a lot of Facebook Live out here to where that it can be kind of posted and you can look at it. Uh, usually those are five minutes or less. And sometimes, um, that's about all I can take in. <laughs> There's no final questions. I'll ask everyone to hang on for a minute because Christine has a quick poll that we're going to do. But um, I just wanted to thank thank you guys for staying late and, and working with us to share this information. And thank you everyone that joined. I finally had a time to look through the list and I see we have people from New Zealand and Indiana and New York and New Hampshire and Georgia and all over. So um, Texas, it's great. Uh, Massachusetts, um, this is really wonderful. And we're also recording this. So uh, for people that couldn't make it, this will be available on our website as well. So um, thank you all very much. And we hope we get yeah. to do this again in the future. Yes, we hope it helps you to make some decisions and you know send us suggestions. Cause we, like I said, we want to update our forms uh, and the website and, you know, include you, you have a lot, you know, you have a really active engaged uh, association of producers, which not everybody has that and it's mm -hmm. you know that's really refreshing and you know we would like to 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 make the forms uh, again even if they're all online uh whatever you know we want to make it specific to your animal uh we have the capability to do that and that would be helpful for you so so just be sure to get, stay in touch and let you know let us know we know that there was the issue with the study that uh, a study design doing different testing methods and we'll, you know, we will certainly meet and set up a time to go over that with you uh, to move forward on that project as well. Great, thank you. Christine, did you wanna share your poll and any the poll last is words? Not, the poll is not working right now. <laughs> Play around a little more with that. With the technology, I've got all excited about doing it. So I'll send a follow-up email to <laughs> membership regarding future programs. Great. Okay. Great. Well, well thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. We really oh, appreciate it. you're welcome. This. Thanks for joining, uh, yes. Dr. Joe David. Nice to see you. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> and David Shaw joining us. Oh, great. Too. Nice to see you. Cool. Great. Thank you, everybody. Have, okay. a, good night. have, have a good evening. Night.